march today for jobs and freedom. But we have nothing to be proud of, but hundreds and thousands of our brothers are not here. But they're receiving starvation wages or no wages at all. While we stand here, there are sharecroppers in the Delta of Mississippi who are out in the field working for less than $3 a day, 12 hours a day. While we stand here, there are students in jail on trump up charges. Our brother James Farmer, along with many others, is also in jail. We come here today with a great sense of misgiving. It is true that we support the administration's civil rights bill. We support it with great reservation, however. Unless, unless Tile 3 is put in this bill, there's nothing to protect the young children and old women who must face police dogs and fire hoses in the South while they engage in peaceful demonstrations. In its present form, this bill will not protect the citizen of Danville, Virginia, who must live in constant fear of a police state. It will not protect the hundreds and thousands of people who have been arrested upon Trump charges. What about the three young men, Snickfield's secretary in America's Georgia, who faced the death penalty for engaging in peaceful protests? As it stands now, the voting section of this bill will not help the thousands of black people who want to vote. It will not help the citizens of Mississippi, of Alabama, and Georgia who are qualified to vote but lack a sixth grade education. One man, one vote is the African crop. It is our tool. It must be ours. We must have legislation that will protect the Mississippi sharecropper who is put off of his farm because he dared to register to vote. We need a bill that will provide for the homeless and starving people of this nation. We need a bill that will ensure the equality of a maid who earns $5 a week in a home of a family whose total income is $100,000 a year. We must have a good FEPC bill. My friends, let us not forget that we are involved in a serious social revolution. By and large, American politics is dominated by politicians who build their career on immoral compromising and align themselves with open form of political, economic, and social exploitation. <laughs> there are exceptions, of course. We salute those. But what political leader can stand up and say, my party is the party of principles? For the party of Kennedy is also the party of Islam. The party of Javis is also the party of Goldwater. Where is our party? Where is the political party that will make it unnecessary to march on Washington? Where is the political party that will make it unnecessary to march in the streets of Birmingham? Where is the political party that will protect the citizens of Albany, Georgia? Do you know that in Albany, Georgia, nine of our leaders have been indicted, not by the Dixocrats, but by the Frederick government for a peaceful protest. But what did the Frederick government do when Albany Deputy Sheriff beat Attorney C.B. King and left him half dead? What did the Frederick government do when local police official kicked and assaulted the pregnant wife of Slater King and she lost her baby? Those who have said be patient and wait, we must say that we cannot be patient. We do not want our freedom gradually, but we want to be free now. We are tired. We are tired of being beaten by policemen. We are tired of seeing our people locked up in jail over and over again. And then you holler, be patient. How long can we be patient? We want our freedom and we want it now. We do not want to go to jail, but we will go to jail if this, this is the price we must pay for love brotherhood and true peace. I appeal to all of you to get in this great revolution that is sweeping this nation.
Get in and stay in the streets of every city, every village and hamlet of this nation until true freedom comes, until the revolution of 1776 is complete. We must get in this revolution and complete the revolution. For in the Delta of Mississippi, in Southwest Georgia, in the Black Belt of Alabama, in Harlem, in Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, and all over this nation, the black masses are on the march for jobs and freedom. They're talking about slow down and stop. We will not stop. All of the forces of Eastland Barnett, Wallace, and Thurman will not stop this revolution. If we do not get meaningful legislation out of this Congress, the time will come when we will not confine our march into Washington. We will march through the South, through the streets of Jackson, through the streets of Danville, through the streets of Cambridge, through the streets of Birmingham. But we will march with the spirit of love and with the spirit of dignity that we have shown here today. By the forces of our demand, our determination, and our numbers, we shall splinter the segregated South into a thousand pieces and put them together in the image of God and democracy. We must say, wake up America, wake up, for we cannot stop and we will not and cannot be patient.